in this question, we have three three-digit positive integers such that one of them is the sum of the other two. Already there, I'll just pause for a moment and say to myself, y must be less than 900 and z must also be less than 900 because if any one of them is 900 or greater than 900 and then you add to that another three-digit positive integer, you're going to get a four-digit positive integer. But we were told that even the sum of the two three-digit positive integers is also itself a three-digit positive integer. Okay, so we know all of that. The question wants to know whether the hundreds digit of x is exactly equal to the sum of the hundreds digits of y and z. So I have to ask myself, under what circumstances would that be the case? And under what circumstances would that not be the case? Intuitively, I'm thinking, it would always be the case, right? If you're adding two three-digit numbers, then for the sum, you're going to have a units digit that's the sum of the units digits, a tens digit that's the sum of the tens digits, and a hundreds digit that's the sum of the hundreds digits. Would that ever not be the case? Well, I suppose if we have to carry the one, remember that from, from grade one or grade two, where you're adding numbers and you have to carry the one. So for example, eight plus seven is actually 15, right? The, the units digit of 15 is five, but five is not the sum of eight and seven. We had more than 10 there, we had to carry the one. So if that happens, then the answer would be no, right? The hundreds digit of X would not be the sum of the hundreds digits of Y and Z. So really what they're asking is, do we need to carry the one when adding y and z? Now, I don't mind if we have to carry the one from the units digit to the tens digit, because the question isn't about the tens digit. What I care about is whether when we add the tens digits, do we have to carry the one into the hundreds digit, because that would give us a no. But if we don't have to carry the one, that's a yes. Now, I think doing all of this thinking before we go to the statements makes it fairly easy to evaluate the statements because statement one tells us exactly what we needed to know. It's talking about the tens digits. I mean, if the tens digit of the sum is in fact the sum of the tens digits of y and z, well, then we're not carrying a one. So statement one is sufficient on its own. On the other hand, with statement two, it's just talking about the units digits. We can't actually make a proper inference there about what happens when the tens digits are added, so statement two is not sufficient on its own, and the correct answer is A. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.